Welcome to BSW's Tech Dive. Tech, tech Dive. The birds, the ship. The show goes technically deep into products you care about. <laughs> the new, the old, the newish. So put on your gear, close up the hatch, and prepare to dive. Dive. The birds, the ship. And now, here's John. Hello again, it's BSW's Tech Dive, and I am John Lynch, Director of Business Development here at Broadcast Supply Worldwide and BSWUSA.com. Today's topic, low-power FM transmitters from Nautel, and my guest is Jeff Welton, and they came up with a series that is just perfect in this area. It covers three different power ranges. All you have to remember is the VS series, like Victor Sam, okay? So that's what you remember. Then we go from there, but a 300, a 1 kilowatt, and a 2.5 kilowatt in the LP series from Nortel. And very often, very quickly available. Jeff, let's talk about what happens in the VS series. Go ahead. So the VS series has been out for ooh, almost uh, eight years now, something like that. It's probably the most popular transmitter series we've ever launched. There are, are somewhere in the order of about four or 5,000 of them in the field now. Um, they've been a, a solid little box. The cool thing about them is that they're eminently portable. I mean, the VS 2.5, a 2.5 kilowatt transmitter capable of 2,800 watts that will do... Well, it'll do the full 2,800 watts, weighs 65 pounds, and can be rack-mounted. Hmm. You know, I mean, going back to the old days, you know, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth and I got into this industry. You mean when I, I was mean, on uh, the air. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tran transmitter that size was about the size of the desk I'm sitting behind and weighed yep. probably about 10 times as much. Exactly. One big cabinet for a little 250 watts or something like that. So onward mm -hmm. with good technology development. That's good. Okay. So that's cool. The other thing is that we implemented, we kind of pioneered the philosophy of, of putting as many of the things that we used to use external boxes for. Um, things like RDS generation, SCA generators, uh, you know, stereo generators, uh, processing. All that stuff is something that we can add as an option or as a standard feature in the VS, depending. I mean, processing is, I think, the one option. Everything else is built in. So it, it's got a very rudimentary automation system. Will it replace your, your singing and dancing? I, I was going to say Rivendell, but pick your automation system of choice. <laughs> Not really, but if you need a backup, you can slam a USB stick with 100 MP3 files onto it, build a playlist in the transmitter itself, and put it on the air and have it running in a matter of no time at all. If you've got all that stuff pre-configured, you can set it up for hot backup. So, you know, you could lose, you could have a backhoe drive through your fiber, your STL tower could come down, whatever happens to take you down, and the transmitter, as long as it's got power and an antenna connected to it, can still be putting a signal on the air. I'm going to interrupt um, you here for a second, because yeah. the examples that you gave... Some people who have never been in and around a radio station might think, oh, yeah, that's not going to happen. No, that does happen. The backhoe does go through. Or, the, or, hey, we have things called hurricanes and tornadoes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So anything, all these kinds of things can happen. And by utilizing what you have with the VS series, you can get back on the air in a hurry. Yeah. So my run and joke, I live way out in the woods, out off the coast of the North Atlantic Ocean. And our running joke is whenever we go for a hike in the woods, I coil up a 20-foot piece of fiber optic cable and put it in my pocket. My wife asked me one day, she goes, what's that for? And I said, well, because if we ever do get lost, I'll just take this cable out and stretch it out on the ground. And I said, within half an hour, a backhoe will come by to cut it, and we'll have a lift home. <laughs> I like that. Good one. Okay. I've uh, heard heard that from one of my mm -hmm. engineering customers not too long ago, and I've sure. been abusing the daylights out of it ever since. But what you're talking about, though, is, and this is also a tradition in radio. When the right. engineer is on vacation, that's when things go bad. Stuff but you got to be able to at, do it. Uh, yes. Afternoon drive on a Friday of a long weekend, or 2 a.m. on a Sunday. 
either that. Yeah, it's now, one of those two. <laughs> the other cool thing about this little automation system is even if you don't want to use it for backup, we got a lot of folks using the 300s and 1 kilowatts for translators, and mm -hmm. they will put a station ID on the uh, USB stick and set the automation system up to play the ID. You know, it's not the most seamless thing, but if you need to hit a local ID, that's a way to do it. Um, you can update the content on the USB stick over a, a network connection. So, you know, you can keep uh, spot count uh, fairly current in it. Then that way you're not doing make goods if you end up losing an STL or, you know, Lord forbid, have a fire at the studio or anything like that. So it, it gives you a whole lot of power and flexibility. If you need to switch between live and satellite feeds on a regular basis, you can automate all that right in the transmitter. Now, Let's say a lot of uh, LPFMs, for example, aren't licensed for a full 300 watts. So how do you operate there? So the VS300 does have a, a separate version for the LPFM. It's, it's the VS300 LP. And that's critical to note because if you've got an LP license, like a call sign dash LP in the FCC registry, then you need to have a transmitter that has a the tag on the back with an FCC LPFM ID that that tag needs to be physically mounted to the transmitter. And that that's part of the LPFM requirement. If you don't have that, technically you're not legal, not my job to judge, but it's just something to be aware of. Now, sure. if the LPFMs typically are hundred Watts at hundred feet, well, if you're running into a one bay antenna, then you could use up to 250 Watts of transmitter power. So the 300 seem to be the best fit for that. And uh, that's the one that we do have LP certified. Absolutely. Now, if, you, if you've got a two bay, then yeah, you need about 150 watts and the transmitter's got all kinds of headroom. And having headroom, is that a good thing or a not necessary thing? What is that? It's never a bad thing. Now, as, as I said in one of our other sessions at one point, we build a lot, of, uh, a lot of headroom into our boxes by design that a lot of other manufacturers don't. I'll give you an example. Um, in the process of replacing another brand where they need the customer needs to hit 1050 watts to get his uh, to get his ERP his radiated power now the uh, other brand transmitter he's got will not go above 1000 it's rated for 1000 it makes 1000 so it's doing what it's sold to do but he needs 1050 so RVS uh, 1 as an example and I've got one on the air at my own station uh, mine's been running 1,400 watts for the better part of three and a half years. Oh, okay. So uh, now I'll tell you right off that I've got all the excess headroom <laughs> being used, and I probably should upgrade the transmitter to a bigger one. One would it, think go. you are using the whole thing. I mean, you're you're not just floorboarded. You're through the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's a dent in the floor with the, about the shape of my foot. it's still on, which is what the transmitter is supposed to be. Stay on. Since, since August 2016. There you go. Now, up to but this VS series fits a lot of FM uses because it also goes as high as 2.5K. And the 2.5 will run to 2,800 watts, and it will do it consistently all day long. So, and again, with some headroom built in, there's actually 3,000 watts worth of amplifier in that transmitter and 3,100 watts, uh, no, closer to 4 kVA worth of power supplies. What about availability so, and lead time on the VS series? So the VS series are kind of unique. If you order them from us and it's not an emergency, we're going to tell you two weeks, okay? Um, if we're really slammed, which we were last week, then it might be three, but uh, they're pretty fast. If you're in an emergency situation, you got a CP going to expire, you're off the air, something like that, you give us a call. We stock them in Memphis. I can have one there the next morning. You give us a call, and then we'll call you. There you go. <laughs> that, that, that works a whole lot better because somebody's going to want to collect the bill. <laughs> and by the way, uh, there's the number right up there, 800-426-8434 for BSW. But key to remember, and I remember this because this happened at an NAB show a few years ago, and we had a customer on the floor, and they needed one like right now, and I'm on the phone with you, and you're elsewhere, mm -hmm. and then you said, now i got to call this guy over here. But yeah, we had it in Memphis. Shipped out yep. that night, they had it back on the air the next day. That is Nautel coming through for the end user. I had a guy call me from Alabama one day. His uh, Brand X uh, 3 kilowatt went down, 
And he said, how fast can you get me a transmitter? And I said, you're a five-hour drive from Memphis. If your uh, wife sets up the payment, it'll be sitting there in a box when you get to Memphis. And sure enough, five and a half hours later, he was on his way back from Memphis with a new transmitter, a two and a half kilowatt in the trunk of his car. Well, Jeff, it's been great information and learning about the VS series, VS 300 for 300 watts, one VS1 for 1,000 watts, VS 2.5 for 2,500 watts. Readily mm-hmm. available or in an emergency could be available on an emergency time schedule through bswusa.com. If you're in an emergency situation, though, save yourself some time. Don't go online. The number's right there. 800-426-8434. If you're off the air and you need something, you call us. We'll get a hold of Jeff and company at Nautel and get you taken care of right away through the spares that they keep in Memphis, Tennessee, which, by the way, happens to be uh, the headquarters of one of the major shipping companies on the planet, so it gets out of there that night. So perfect. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. Jeff Welton from Nautel, and thanks to you for joining us for another edition of BSW Tech Dive. Baby, turn out the light.